In the last few parts of section 3.4, we're going to be talking about um, a couple of things. First of all, relative rate of change and something called elasticity. So first of all, relative rate of change. Um, we're talking about basically comparing a change to the original amount. So here we have a little formula. It says change in the size of the quantity divided by the size of the quantity. So relative rate of change. So it says here, for example, suppose that the price of a movie ticket increases from $10 to $11. So the original price is $10. Okay. So we're going to divide by the original quantity. So we'll just kind of write this means original quantity, original price, but the original. So 10 goes at the bottom. We have increased the price to $11. We want to know what is the change in that price. So we're going to take uh, the new price, we're going to subtract it from the original price. So we get 1 over 10, and that's 1 tenth, and if I write that as a decimal, I get 0 0.10. If I wanted to write that as a percentage, then I can multiply that by 100, and I get a 10% increase, basically, in price. So a 10% increase um, from the original price, based upon that original. Um, let's say that we suppose that we change the movie ticket from $5 to $6. Now, notice here that the price for both of these examples goes up by $1. But the percentage or the relative rate of change is different. So let's see why. Okay, we're going to put the original price, which is here. We're going to put that at the bottom, which is 5 and we're going to find the difference or what the change is so we're going to take the new price subtract it from the old and we get one fifth okay if I put that into my calculator I get 0 0.20 and if I multiply that by 100 to change it to a percentage we get a 20 percent increase in the price of the movie ticket Okay. so the increase for both of these examples was the same as far as it was one dollar, one dollar, but based upon the original price, the percentage in that change is different. So a ten percent increase here, um, and a twenty percent increase here. All right, so here's our formula. We're going to say this is our relative rate of change formula. Um, the derivative represents a change or the rate of change. So we're going to say here's the difference in the prices or in the difference in the quantities and this is going to be our original uh, the original amount that's how we're going to think about that so the derivative represents a change difference so rate of change let's go ahead and write that rate of change where that's what the derivative represents um, divided by the original quantity or the original amount. Now if I want to change this to be a percentage, I could just multiply by 100 and then I would actually get the percentage rate of change. So I kind of have two different expressions here. All right. So let's look at an example. Uh, here we have an example dealing with inflation. It says an economy's consumer price index is described by the following function. So we have I of t equals and then we have our function. Uh, or T is measured in years, T equals zero corresponding to the beginning of 2012, we're asked to find the annual percentage rate of inflation in the CPI, remember that's consumer price index, um, of the country. Okay. Um, the rate of inflation is defined, it says defined as the percentage relative rate of change of I. Um, so we're going to find the relative rate of change of i, and we're going to rest for that percentage relative rate of change. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the derivative of i. Okay, so we're going to take our formula. We're going to go back up here. What is percentage rate of change? It means we have to find the derivative of the function, and then we have to divide it by the original function. And if we're looking for a percentage, we're going to multiply through by 100 to find that percentage. So let's first find the derivative. All right, so in order to do that, we're going to use the power rule. So for the first term, I get negative 0.15t squared plus, so the next term, 2 times 0.5 is 1, 
and then I'm going to multiply that by t and reduce the power by 1 and just get 1t and that's a constant so I get 0. I'm going to not write the 1 there just to make it look a little bit simpler. So there's our derivative of i. Now we're supposed to divide that by the original function. So this is our relative rate of change. So we have negative 0 0.05, so we're just going to write down the original function as is that we were given for i. Alright, so we're asked to find what is the relative rate of change at the beginning of 2014, which means that is when t is equal to 2. So I'm going to plug t equals 2 into that formula that we just formed here. So we're going to plug in a value of t equals 2. So everywhere I have a t, I'm going to put my 2 in. Alright, I'm just going to throw all that into my calculator. And in the top I get 1.4. And the denominator I get 101.6. Alright, try those in your calculator, make sure that's what you get. And when I actually put those two numbers into my calculator and do the division, I get something that looks like this. 0.0137. All right, so we're asked to find the percent, this is the rate of change, we're asked to find the percent rate of change. So I'm going to take this last value here and I'm going to multiply by 100. That's going to move, of course, move the decimal place over two spaces, so I get about 1.4% as the rate of inflation in the CPI of the country. All right, so this is our percentage rate of change, relative rate of change of I.